sexually shameless, binge drinking, antisocial rebels. We know them as Ladettes. We like the old one night stands, can't go wrong. It's been so many I've lost count. More than I've had hot dinners, I reckon. Get pissed, shots, jumping about, arguing with someone. For some people, I am too much. It's just like, oh, this girl's just scare out my face. They're a blight on society, and it's a phenomenon that's getting even worse. So once again, we're turning to our traditional cure for this very modern problem, reopening the doors of Eggleston Hall, a tough 1950s finishing school where the teachers are unwavering in their antiquated methods. Telima grandiflora atropa purea. Excuse me! Never, Sorry. ever do that in front of me ever again. Oh, All right. But this time, the intake are ruder. I'm not going to change. You're going to change. Uh, I'm going to change when you Drunker, looser, I'm for a game ban. and more unteachable than ever before. You two, give it one. Into bed, just Please. on the floor. I think this is probably the worst of the worst. My name, just for the record, is not hardcore. It's Harvard. It's going to be a grueling five weeks, and at the end. Only one girl will be crowned a true lady at a lavish graduation ceremony. She's fabulous breeding stock. I would be delighted to have her have a child with one of my children. of the finishing school reached its peak in the 1950s. A school like this would literally finish preparing girls from well-to-do families to be ladies. Principal Jill Harbord has been at Eggleston Hall for more than 32 years. I have seen many things at Eggleston Hall, but this year I really am preparing for the worst. This term, the finishing school will be opening its doors to eight hardcore ladettes, and each week, one of them will be expelled. Meet the breast-enhanced bisexual bouncer, Kelly Simpson. I've got a high sex drive, and the girls have called me a nymphomaniac in the past. I've been with girls, yeah. Try it. Don't knock it. Variety is the spice of life. When she's not partying, Thoroughly modern Kelly works the door in a Cardiff nightclub. Yeah, Been hit on numerous black, but black eyes. Her boss knows just how tough she can be. Flies like a butterfly, stings like a bee, that's Kelly. But now family pressure is driving Kelly to finishing school. My mum would love me to transform to a lady. It's getting to a point now that we won't even go out for food. I'm loud and just embarrassing. Soon, Kelly will meet the formidable etiquette teacher, Liz Brewer. These girls have based their entire standard on life on really getting drunk and getting laid. Mrs. Brewer will school the girls in social decorum and will whisk them off to some of the finest society events. We're going to see if we can blow out all these sort of cobwebs and all the toxins within them and release the person who we hope is inside. Could there be a lady inside Holly Clements? At 4 foot 10 inches, this basled and tearaway has never held down a job and thinks nothing of drinking away her dole money. In the evening, I go out to get laggard. So I do, get laggard. Holly will need to rethink her ways with men. We like the old one night stands, can't go wrong. Don't tell him your name, fuck him, and then go back home. Holly's father has turned to Eggleston Hall in desperation. I'm at the end of my uh, tether with her. Somehow down the line she's become, in my opinion, feral. 
One of the teachers responsible for taming this mini wildcat is deputy head and cookery teacher Rosemary Schrager. They're going to have to work extremely hard. They're going to have to change every single value that they have into another value. <laughs> Heaven knows what we're going to get, but in my book, I love the challenge. I'm interested in seeing what they're like to begin with, from the word go. I think I know what they're going to be like. <laughs> And it fills me with apprehension. It fills you with horror, Jill, with horror! The first to arrive is the eye-popping bouncer, Kelly Simpson. My godfather's... She's almost nude. Even to her bottom. <gasps> She's actually almost nude. Yes, boobs to the floor. Oh. Actually, that I am a bit shocked about. Shocked? I'm not. I think she needs to cover up immediately. Hello. Hello. Now, who have we Hello. got here? I'm Kelly. I'm Mrs. Harbert. Hello, Mrs. Harbert. She did that on purpose to shock us. She actually quite succeeded, because not only that, I would have thought she was really cold. That's the least she deserves. Next up the drive is Cockshaw Nima Mataka. She was fostered as a child and ran away to London at 16. Nima is a self-styled ghetto princess, an East End hairdresser by day and a party-going girl by night. I'm quite loud, I'm quite in your face. I'm a hyperactive person, so some people can take that as too much. For some people, I am too much. Rude girl Nima is more familiar with the rules of the street than the rules of polite society. I like to drink. A lot of people say to me, oh, you don't have to drink to have a good time. I don't drink to have a good time. I'm more happy than you, actually. I drink because I like it and knock them back, you know. This is Mrs. Schrager. Hello. All right, darling. Hello. Yes. And I'm Mrs. Harbord. A lot, right. darling. How do you do? All right, bless. Thank you. Would you please now take your case and go upstairs? And um, we'll see you later. I think we're going to have trouble with her. Do you? I do, a little bit of trouble, mm. yes. Mm. But we'll see. Um, just... I'm sorry. My case is so heavy that I might need a hand with it. Absolutely no way. I don't think you should have bought so much rubbish. Rubbish? I see what's inside, huh? <laughs> oh, hell. That one, I think, is going to be a nightmare. One by one, the ladettes arrive and are shown to their dorms. A blonde! Hello, Hello. 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 Hello has been brought to Eggleston Hall by her parents. Are you pleased to be here, to leave her? Very pleased. <laughs> How can you afford to spend money on drink? From the doll. From the doll? So you mean I'm paying for it? Yeah, thanks. Off you go. Can you take your luggage? No, don't. Can you take oh, your luggage me? upstairs? Yes, you. What did your last servant die of? Food poisoning. We have really got our work cut out. They are here to learn, and learn they will. It's a brand new term at Eggleston Hall Finishing School. But the last ladette has still not arrived. <sighs> the seven who are here have been summoned before the teachers. Nothing will deter Principal Jill Harbord from starting the new term on time. Welcome to Eggleston Hall. Now you will all here, believe it or not, to become ladies. This is not for the faint-hearted. If you do make it, your reward will be priceless. Why are you laughing? I'm not laughing. You were laughing. I wasn't laughing. You were laughing. And don't answer back. 
18-year-old Laura Ward from Doncaster has lofty ambitions to be a lawyer, but the only bar she knows is scarcely the haunt of barristers. I should be studying all the time early to achieve good grades that I want, but there's a lot of distractions all the time. A little rough around the edges, a bit of a wild party girl. Laura has twice postponed her A-levels, and her family worry that her hedonistic lifestyle will ruin her career prospects. You can't function the next day when you've been out till two or three in the morning. If Laura doesn't change her demeanor, she'll never get on, especially in law. The enormity of the task ahead is becoming clear. Looking at you now, I despair as to whether we will actually be able to achieve transforming you lot. Without warning, the missing Ladette makes her entrance. I beg your pardon? A mere four hours late. I'm late, sorry. I'm a bit late. Yes, you are late. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Charlotte Donahue loves being in the limelight, and despite having no ear for a tune, she's never let it stop her having fun. No one sees me, I like seeing myself, you know. I think I'm a brilliant singer. You know what I mean? I'm always censored at attention. She was voted Liverpool's most outrageous clubber of the year in 2006. Even her mother is embarrassed. She could do a uh, tone and down. She hasn't got a clue, really. <laughs> A trainee beautician, with tattooed eyebrows and sunbed tan, she spends more time on herself than at beauty school. She's now on her last warning, and is hanging on to her college place by her thickly lacquered fingertips. Charlotte's self-indulgent ways are not unique. All these ladettes are bound to clash with the harsh school rules. Will you please now change into your new uniforms? Transforming these ladettes into ladies begins with a compulsory change of clothing. But for some, the Eggleston Hall summer uniform feels more like a straitjacket. Now do your buttons up, try and look like the other girl. Wear your uniform as it should be worn. You do not have to look like a page three girl. Now Nima's nails come in for some close scrutiny. These all have to go, I'm afraid. This has got to go. No, so, I think your nails are hideous. Pass the tray down, please. No. To reduce corrupting influences, mobile phones are banned. Have you got another mobile in your suitcases? No. Right. Please all go now. Go the ladette's hackles are up. She doesn't look like a page three girl. I made up with that. She don't dig the nails. She, do she realise the time and effort that went into this? I think this is probably the worst of the worst. Seriously. Four hours overdue, Charlotte's late arrival has not impressed the principal. Now, can you tell me why you were late? I had to go and get a conditioner from the Astor and it was quite busy. Get and, uh, yourself organised in future will and do. let that be the very first and last time you are late on this course. Thank you, you may go. With a bit more um. With all ladettes present and correct, the traditional class photograph is taken. Lady! And so begins a brand new term at Eggleston Hall. Next morning, a surprise awaits the girls at breakfast. An invitation to a lunch party at one of Scotland's finest country houses. It's their first big test of the term, after which one of them will be expelled. Dear pupils, Eggleston Hall, a finishing school. You are cord cordially invited to a formal fruits de mer function at one of Britain's finest stately homes, Madison. It's an alien cuisine, especially for territorial army girl Simone Weber. What's fruits de mer? But no, it's fruit of the sea, fruit I think. What do you mean fruit? Does it that, that's in the sea? <laughs> you can imagine that. I didn't know. No fruit grows in the sea. Oh.
The girls have just five days to learn how to conduct themselves in the presence of some of Britain's most eligible bachelors. Oysters, a very nutritional food. Liz Brewer begins an uncompromising introduction to sophisticated food and appropriate table manners. Oh, God, it's like mucus. I tell you something, it tells a lot about a girl if she can't eat an oyster. Eat it as you would normal food. Holly. Now, Holly, don't swallow it. No. You need to suck it in. You know, you need to draw it in. Well done, Simo. Don't swallow it. Eat it first. No. What's that smell? Love it. No. Oh. Then don't speak. <laughs> Holly, you've got a finger bowl. If you want to spit it out, spit it in. It's all beginning to prove rather unsavoury. So what is this? What was the problem there? That was all like uh, common there. <laughs> and it's too much for tough girl Simone. Sorry, I just can't do really it. This is ridiculous. I felt like I was swallowing my own phlegm, you know? In the 1950s, it was essential for a lady to be appropriately dressed at every occasion. And assisting the girls in this was an important aspect of the curriculum. Liz Brewer has asked the girls to come to class wearing their best outfits, but the results are not what she'd hoped for. I can see you've all done your best, but I'm going to let you now into an Aladdin's cave. There are a whole load of dresses and outfits that you could each choose from. I'm going to have this one. How do you take it on? <laughs> Most of the girls delight in the options, but Charlotte thinks she knows better. I'm not going to wear the dress. I think I'll stay as I am. It's not a move designed to impress Mrs. Brewer. Right, well, before we go any further, you haven't changed. Got to be gentle, haven't you? I'm sorry? I prefer to be overdressed than wearing anything. I'm sorry, you look like an absolute slut. Well, I don't think you You cannot go nice. to lunch showing Well, I'm not going to go breath. to lunch. Expel me then and I won't go to lunch. Go out and change. I'm not going to change. You'll you get changed. I'm going to change when you get changed. You will go Watch out me. right now. Say? Go outside. Come on, then. I look like a slut. Yes, you do. You look like a slut. On top of her willful act of rebellion, Charlotte has also smuggled in a phone and calls her mum. I'm like a slut of a teacher. She's just a little jealous. Come and get me. Now, in actual fact, you look utterly charming. Did you see the clothes in there? Like, my mum wouldn't even wear it. Do you know what I mean? So then she goes, you look like a slut. Well, fair enough. Do you know what I mean? I, I don't see many sluts dressed like this. Charlotte's mother soon arrives, and a crisis meeting with Jill Harbord is called. It's the moment of truth for Charlotte. She has no thought for anybody but herself. She doesn't seem to take anything on board except what she wants. I just mention one thing, I don't want to be a lady no more. I don't like getting, like, getting up, and I don't really like work, and I'm putting my mind to things, I just like doing what I want and going, like, doing things and that. Right. I think she's determined, isn't she? Yet again, it seems Charlotte gets whatever Charlotte wants. And after two days at Eggleston Hall, she leaves, having learnt nothing. If she'd only tried. <laughs> Shall we get her a cup of tea? Because I think I'd just like to see her oh, drive away. Mm -hmm. Charlotte's departure has had a shock effect on the others, especially Kelly. It's just been a hard morning, really hard morning. So I've been up here, I've shed, I've shed a few tears as well. I need to toughen my act up, who wouldn't even believe I was a bouncer right now. With the Charlotte episode behind them, term must continue and there are a number of new staff to meet the challenge of these unruliest of students. You never look down at your chair. 
It's deportment teacher Rachel Holland's job to instruct the girls on how to walk gracefully in time for the Manderston lunch. I want your shoulders back, eyes up, raise, one, two, three, higher, two. Her strict methods have even been used on the Saudi royals. Two, three, it's going to hurt and it should hurt. Toe first, toe, toe. As long as you can remember those P's, poise, posture, presence, you'll do very well this weekend. Tittle tattle, tittle tattle, tittle tattle, tittle tattle. Practice a thousand times a day. Caroline Sherwood Roberts certainly knows her P's and Q's. New. New. Bring it forward, that's all in your nose. Amber was thirsty after rehearsing. After. She is a well-respected elocution teacher to the cream of British society. And it's the. Leather. That's it, leather. Leather. No. The demands on the girls have been relentless, and the ladettes are beginning to go stir-crazy. We've got to do something. I mean, half a glass of wine, glass or two, maybe three. Well, the old bottle. <laughs> <laughs> what about, you know, rewards for good behaviour? Yeah. A lady must never get drunk. But with one in five young British women classed as binge drinkers, teaching these ladettes moderation may prove difficult. Over supper, the girls are permitted wine under the supervision of the teachers. Can I just do this to you? Thank you very much. Later, the teachers retire to the staff room, leaving the girls to clear up before bed. Good night, girls. Good night. Moderation is immediately discarded as the girls revert to type. Oi, let's nap our drinks now. Are you ready? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Drink that wine. I'll let her go. Ooh, this is lovely. Ooh. 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 The teachers are blissfully unaware of the escalating anarchy. It's well past lights out, but like the food, the rules seem to have gone out of the window. What are you doing, Kelly? You're showing them how to move. Kelly. They want to see that. All of you, will you please go upstairs now? Yes, please. Mrs. Schrager is in no mood for negotiation. Right. Leave your glasses now. But she's oblivious to the carnage in the dining room. It's becoming disturbingly apparent that this intake may prove beyond recovery. Since failing last night's test of drinking in moderation, the girls are now suffering the consequences. <laughs> I was so, so sick. Exactly. The teachers are equally sickened by the ladettes' shenanigans. They were shouting, they were spilling wine, and rude. Mm. Very, very rude. It's alcohol. Yes. All the time. But the staff only know the half of it. Mrs. Schrager soon discovers the true extent of the Ladette's debauched evening. I can't believe it, but the fact is, I can't believe it. it's everywhere. When did it, when did they do this? I mean, we only left them. Eggleston Hall rules have been severely flouted. I have just come in, and what I have found is absolutely deplorable. Food on the wall, food on the floor, food. Who is responsible for this? Who? Were you responsible for this? I remember, I made 
have been a part, I probably was a part of it, because I can't remember anything apart from going to bed. I am completely and utterly appalled by your behaviour. Sorry, Mr. Sorry, Sorry, Mr. Sorry, Mr. Sorry, Mr. I'm ashamed of myself. Yeah. Right. You're going to now clean up the whole of this school. With their first big test coming up tomorrow at Manderston, the girls should be studying. Instead, they must clean Eggleston Hall from top to bottom, including the lavatories. Fuck, fuck is now, I weren't expecting that. <laughs> Laura Ward is one Ladette who feels no remorse for last night's depravity. It's worth it. I wouldn't change last night. <laughs> Hell no. The wannabe lawyer's choice of career seems at total odds with her defiance of authority. I reckon there's going to be a lot worse at punishments than this. Because there's going to be a lot worse behaviour than that last night. After their disgraceful antics, the Ladettes are sent to bed early, in preparation for their big day tomorrow. Manderston Hall, one of Britain's most magnificent Edwardian stately homes, is situated on the Scottish borders. The seven Ladettes are guests at a formal luncheon, which will be followed by an afternoon of croquet with some of the country's most eligible bachelors. As ladies, they're offered the opportunity to powder their noses before lunch. Being in such splendid surroundings is a daunting new experience. You it's amazing. Nice. It's nice. It is nice. Never seen somewhere like this before. Mm -hmm. This test is the culmination of a week of intense lessons in deportment, elocution and etiquette. All of them are aware that within 24 hours, one of them will be expelled. I think they're expecting us to be like, yeah, 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 come yeah. cross our legs in the right way. way, that's it. So it girls, just be ourselves and enjoy ourselves, that's yeah, the only thing we can do. Bolshe Rumford rebel Nicole Hart is no stranger to trouble. With one arrest and an ASBO under her belt, a good night out for Nicole is alcohol fueled and fiery. Get pissed, bar, shots, jumping about, arguing with someone. The 18-year-old never holds back from a good fight. If someone took the right piss at me or hit me, I would not think twice about hitting back. But it hasn't always been this way. The tragic deaths of two of Nicole's brothers eight years ago sent her on a downward spiral. I think being angry for such a long time is a big part of your life. And you do actually find it hard to laugh and you find it hard to smile and you find it hard to love anything or anyone. Since the loss of her brothers, Nicole's parents have found her impossible to control. Nicole did get stuck in the angry stage for a long time. She rebelled against everything and everyone since the age of about 13, right the way through. They see finishing school as a last resort for their tempestuous daughter. Today is Nicole's first big challenge. It's like normally when you go out, I don't give a fuck. I'm, I've got all the confidence in the world because you know how it's going to be, sort of thing. But yeah. this is totally different. We're not used so to it's because it's, dif it's different, it makes you nervous, doesn't it? We've got money. He's got money. The girls have spotted their prey, the eligible bachelors. They've all greased up, like. And they're about to go in for the kill. I like that one with the beige jacket up, so I'll give him what for. <laughs> Waved at me. Which one? Know what I mean, fucking, I'm so excited. What one? He won't even do it. Not the one I like. I'll fight for him. These dashing young men are some of the most elite of their class. Educated at top public schools, they're all regulars on the high society party scene. Amongst the eligible bachelors are the Saxby twins, Edward and Jonathan. They are one of the Ladettes' biggest tests, since they're renowned for leading young ladies astray. But they're very discerning in their taste. It's the simple things. Simple things that um, just make a lady. Well-mannered. No, intelligent, doesn't swear, obviously. Nothing worse than a girl who swears. Absolutely. 
The Ladettes must also impress Corin Greenhow, a descendant of the Duke of Wellington. The aristocrat Cornelius Frey, related to the notorious Baron von Munchausen, and the debonair polo-playing Darcy Bond. The girls will now meet the bachelors face to face for the first time. <laughs> Heading the party is Lady Edmonston. A leading debutante of her season, she represents all the fine qualities to which the girls should aspire. Hello, gentlemen. Hi. 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 Welcome. Hi. Welcome. And, uh, introduce yourselves. Hi there. Okay. Mike. Liz Brewer will monitor how well the girls perform. Nice. You have been enjoying yourself. Oh, you, you guys haven't seen each other. you And watching them walk in and go straight in and introduce themselves with total ease, I'm amazed. And they're doing very well. We're just about to go in for lunch, girls and boys. Lunch, lunch. Meeting the bachelors is the easy part. The ladettes must now display impeccable etiquette at the elaborate Fruits de Mer luncheon. That's nice, Edward. I've never had lobster before. Am I eating all right? Seems of you. Come on. Absolutely. Absolutely. I will change my way. I will change my way. You all say when I wave, but don't say more than my I come across as an expert on the other side. Oh, really? What, are you horrible? I'm a manipulative. Oh, yeah. Evil character. Can you not sit next to me? <laughs> Holly, the mischievous Cockney, employs her particular charms on Greek shipping heir Michael Lebrew Woolley. Say old macker. old As lunch comes to a close, the ladettes retire to freshen up. Liz Brewer garners the opinions of the bachelors on how well the girls are doing. Supposing they did change, would any of you marry any of these girls? If I was in okay, love, if I was in love, I would. Answering, answering your question, if I had to marry one, the answer would be of course not. The gentlemanly company is taking the girls by surprise. It was good. Nice, nice gentlemen, guys. They were. They were better than I thought they would be. Manderston Hall is renowned for its glorious landscaped gardens. The bachelors and ladettes head down to the lawn for an afternoon of croquet. If you get through the hoop with your ball, you get another go. And last one's a rotten egg. The girls have never seen a croquet set before, let alone played. Hold that up. True to form, it's not long before Saxby twin Jonathan moves in on the call. I think there's a physical attraction from the beginning. Is there? Yeah. Really? Absolutely. I think you and I, baby. Me, me and you, yeah? Absolutely. If I become mm. a lady, I'll be taking me out for a meal. If you're a lady, I will take you. Dinner on me, okay? <laughs> <laughs> Dinner on me. Right, mine. Dinner on me. 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 Edward, he, yeah, Molly. he's my favourite. And him, yeah. I like his head. <laughs> you bet. You bet. Which one? <laughs> you. <laughs> oh, he's getting a bit crude, this one, my old mucker, Ben. No, I've really enjoyed myself. He's a bit boozy, this one. <laughs> you like my old mucker? Quite, darling. We're all old muckers we together. <laughs> you see, the Luddits are making us into Luddits. Exactly. Yeah, we're turning it, them and we're transforming him. Pack your troubles in your own kit. I'm going for a game, Ben. Come on. Consider yourself. Away from Liz's gaze, the girls are about to commit their greatest sin. They're urging the bachelors to strip off for a swim in the lake. We swim just to there. We're having a ball. Oh, do we all, you guys, if you're going to do it? They're all doing it. Come on, let me lightweight. Do it. The clothes are coming off. Hey! 
The girls now set to stealing the boys' clothes. <laughs> For Holly, that includes the clothes they're still wearing. <laughs> no! <laughs> no! As the party comes to a close, the girls' unruly behaviour would appear to have gone unnoticed. But little do these untamable ladettes realise, there will soon be hell to pay. It's time for the ladettes' first weekly assessment. They will face a panel of staff and will be judged on their progress towards becoming a lady. Ultimately, one ladette will be expelled, and a car is already waiting to take her home. <laughs> it's like judgment day. Yeah. It is judgment. I just think I'm going to go, because I always cock up, don't I? It is emotional, it is stressful. I just want to prove to people I can do it, that I'm not this bamser fighting, hardcore, partying bitch all the time. Their performance at Manderston Hall, and any misconduct throughout the week, will all be taken into consideration. Kelly performed well at Manderston, but she's got a lot of ground to recover after she disgraced herself following the teacher's supper. After us giving you a very good evening, then you go and try and clean the, the balusters with, with your underclothes. I really, really do want, I do want to change. Why? I All want right. to make it for myself first, and then I want to make my mother more than anything but proud. But if you've got self-respect, then they will respect you. Does that make sense? It does. Laura. Laura still seems to have shown no remorse after the Ladette's drunken evening. From the moment she arrived, she has proved defiant. Why are you laughing? I'm laughing. You were laughing. I wasn't laughing. You were laughing. We've seen some sulking after anything has been said to you, and if you were keen to do your best, you would accept it with good grace. I am here to try. I am here to try and become a lady. Otherwise, I wouldn't have come all this way. I haven't seen you try. I have been trying. It's got to be your passion. This is character for me. Listen to us. Listen, digest and try with a passion. From my point of view, she's still very insolent. I've got to keep my mouth shut. That's the only thing I'm worried about because sometimes I can't hold it. Forward. I think that's right. Over the top. Yeah. In your face? Yeah. I want to take it by the scruff of her neck and just say, you know, come on, young lady, get it together. I come across with too much confidence. I have an attitude. All I've got to say is, I'm fucking ready for you. Good morning. Good morning. At Manderston, Holly showed her true Ladette colours by trying to lead the young bachelors astray. Say me old mucker. Me old mucker. Me old mucker. Teaching these young men how to say, me old mucker, me old mucker. It was disgraceful. Could you tell me why you did it? It was... I don't know, I just said it. Well, you let yourself down and you let us down. For someone so small, you are a very large and troublesome personality. Fucking bitch. I knew I was going to get a bollock in. Silly cat. If she was to stay, she's going to have to really pull her finger out. In class, Nicole has been a model student. 
but at Manderston Hall, she soon fell from grace. To my absolute horror, I observed you on the steps waving a young man's undergarments in the air, hooting and whooping in the most vulgar manner. I do get carried away and I do want to be the person that's everyone looks at and stuff. It certainly succeeded in that. Everybody would always look at somebody who was waving somebody else's underpants about. The teachers are finally ready to announce their verdict on who must go. You have all let yourselves down this week. Three of you really did take the biscuit. Laura, you have shown very, very little passion about this whole week. You haven't showed us that you truly care. Nicole, you were doing so terribly well. And then we had the fiasco with those underpants. Holly, you have a lot of arrogance and you seem to resent authority. I don't think that anybody has been strong enough with you in the past. We have thought long and hard about this and we all agree on just one person. Laura, your car is waiting outside. Please leave Eccleston Hall. Your time is up. I would like you all now to go back to your common room. The enormous task of becoming a lady is beginning to sink in. By the end of term, only three of the girls will make it to the graduation ceremony. Oh, God. <laughs> she don't deserve it. Well, I thought we should have been there. I thought we... I think I would to go. I'm proper, proper, proper shocked. I'm not proud to lick their ass and suck up to them and say, I'll do this, I'll do that. I think her anger inside is mm. enormous. She was furious. I truly can't see that she's ever going to change. Love ya. Love ya. You know I love ya. <laughs> Quite frankly, we don't want her if she's going to be like that. We really don't. Keep it real. Keep giving it large. <laughs> Samantha, you love you, baby girl. And say baby yourselves, but be as bad as possible, yeah? Only one week has passed, and already two ladettes have fallen by the wayside. It remains to be seen whether the school will succeed in teaching any of these unruly ladettes the true art of being a lady.